China has the IPL, their PLA, their hacker army, mm -hmm. is almost 100,000. Pain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have to elaborate a little yeah, bit yeah. more. <laughs> There's a lot of lessons that you can learn about yourself, about life, mm -hmm. uh, because you have so many life's moments um, that you got to overcome. Welcome back to Small Business Never Sleeps. My name is John Slusser and this is Nathan Maud, and we're the co-founders of the Indiana Small Business Association and your host of Small Business Never Sleeps. Yes, thank you for tuning in. Today is a very special episode featuring our Small Business Night Out sponsor and we could not be more excited. Small Business Never Sleeps is geared specifically towards that small business owner as well as those who represent small business. And in today's episode, we have a very special guest, Jeremy Miller, founder of Lionfish Cybersecurity. Yeah, Jeremy, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for joining us, Jeremy. Thanks for uh, for coming to Small Business Never Sleeps. Absolutely. We certainly appreciate it. Well, hey, let's just dive right in, shall we? Hey, so for those listening who may not know who you are, can you share a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm Jeremy Miller. I'm founder of Lionfish Cybersecurity. I'm from Indiana, and um, I like doing things that are hard. Uh, you know, just recently, I guess recently, I... I've had two hip two hip replacements. Oh my gosh! Uh, from uh, doing uh, a couple of uh, two hundred mile runs. Oh my! And uh, so yeah, two hundred miles at a time. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Like running. There was a lot of hiking, but yeah, it's called a run, but it's a lot Goodness of hiking. It was sakes. in the mountains. You can't run a mile. I don't know if I've <laughs> ran two hundred miles in my life. I don't think I have either. Goodness sakes! How did you get into wanting to run two hundred miles? <clears throat> well. I, that's an interesting story. I really only wanted to do a half a marathon <laughs> and uh, knew some people doing a marathon. And he, I said, you know, I'd be interested in doing a marathon one day. He goes, you know, there's one the next weekend after the mini mm -hmm. was a trail marathon. And I said, okay, I'll try it. So that, and then uh, when I got done with that, I, I said, you know, I'd like to do 50 miles. I've already done 26. He says, well, there's one in six weeks. So I said, okay. So we got ready for that. And I said, well, you know what? I'd like to do 100. Mm -hmm. So... We did a hundred and I said, if I could do a hundred, I could do 200. So that's sound like a, how, sound you know, like David you know, Goggins. Next, next up is 300. <laughs> I guess so. So, so do, you, do you get that ambition from your, your military background? I, I like to push the envelope. Uh -huh. And uh, if you're not really pushing yourself, mm -hmm. then you're not really living. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. Looks that needs like to be I got, a quote. I need to step it up a little bit. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be a 200 mile run. It can oh, be anything. Absolutely. Yeah. If it's, if it's too easy, then everybody can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I that advice for sure. Well, Jeremy, I'm excited to hear about your story. Um, I mean, heck, we started off with 200 mile runs. So, <laughs> could you share more about lionfish and maybe how you how you got brought up or led up to lionfish? Well, the leading up, I was uh, when I was in the military, I was with the special forces. Okay, I was uh, with Fifth Special Forces Group on an active duty and 20th Group, um, and uh, in the guard. And um, so, I, I like doing things that are uh, protecting the country. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when I got out, uh, the last time in 2010, um, started doing these crazy runs. And uh, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine came to me and says, Hey, you know, we should start a school, you know, teaching cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. I'm like, like, okay, that's a great idea. I said, well, I want to do that, but I don't want to do it and only affect a couple of people. Mm -hmm. If we're going to do this, we've got to make this something that's really going to affect the country. Otherwise, why, why do it? You know, I've got better things to do. And so we went down that path of uh, doing a certification school. So mm -hmm. we're accredited school in the state of Indiana. And, um, and then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And we, were, we, we had in our mind to expand our, our platform. That was their first piece of that was the school um, to become a uh, MSSP, which, which is a cybersecurity company that helps protect the companies, right? Okay. And um, so... So we started down that path and we pulled together all the different pieces that have to come, uh, spent a lot of money bringing all this. We've built some technology uh, to even further that. Mm -hmm. but, but in order to do that, it takes a lot. And in this space, there's over 500,000 cyber jobs that are unfulfilled. Really? And these, these, um, the schools and, uh, are pumping out people doing cyber jobs, mm -hmm. but that gap still gets bigger. So there's still not enough people to do cybersecurity around the country. So we've been, um, because of that, we started a, um, an apprenticeship program. So we're nationally approved to do apprenticeship. So we'll bring people in, teach them, and we'll grow them from the inside instead of 
having to fight people mm-hmm. on the outside trying to find our talent and help all the time. That's awesome. Were you an educator or in cybersecurity prior to this? Well, so if you, so the special forces, when we go to a country, we go there and we train up people to fight for their country. Mm -hmm. So when you say education in that stance, yes, Mm -hmm. uh, but formally, no. Uh, Yeah. And cybersecurity, yeah. I was a, an 18 Echo, which, which was communication. So I have, I have been trained classically in cryptology and Morse code and mm-hmm. language school. And so I had early pieces of cybersecurity yeah. before that came up. But, but from, from classical training in cybersecurity itself, that's not, I was not. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So I'm curious. I think everybody's probably pretty curious. Where does the name Lionfish come from? Pain. <laughs> okay. You have to elaborate a yeah, little yeah. more. So uh, the pain is, you know, it got a lot of small business people listening to this. Yep. And uh, when you start a company, uh, you know, you want to check the secretary of state. You want to make sure you get, get uh, the URL you want. But if you don't check and make sure you've got a patent and trademark, mm-hmm. you might be in trouble. So we started with a couple other names, and um, the name we, we came out with was, was a very generic name. It was something we use in the military, but I figured nobody would ever get this name. Mm-hmm. Well, we get the only person that ever got that name uh, to send us a letter, and what their job was was to uh, help their clients protect their names. Okay. So, so as a small business, you know, you, you get this letter and your, your attorney's like, look, you're going to fight this guy. It's going to cost mm-hmm. you $50,000. Like, we're not even making any money. I'm, <laughs> uncle. Right. I'll, yeah. Ch- yeah, I'll change right now. So we changed and, uh, and we picked another name. It was kind of generic. And mm-hmm. uh, so we ended up with a lionfish. There's no cybersecurity company named Lionfish. So well, there that's, you go. That's, that's, that's how it happened. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You shared and, a little. Okay. And, and there's a little bit more. So Lionfish is a very... Um, evasive invasive predator Mm -hmm. and so people try to get rid of them we look at them as our hackers Mm -hmm. right they come and they get in your systems and you got to get them out well that's kind of what a lionfish is in 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 the water so that's why that's the other reason we kept lionfish yeah that makes makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. you shared a little bit about what uh, lionfish does with the apprenticeship and the school and the certifications and all the great things you guys do How, how what are some other ways you help a small business owner thrive so, you know, cybersecurity is expensive and, um, in the, you know, you can't, you can't turn on the news. You can't, you can't lo- watch social media without seeing all these people, these companies being hacked. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that we're doing to help our small business clients is, um, because we have a training company, we're a, a managed service provider, and we're also, um, qualified to do some other things, but, but because we have our training company, we are able to train up the people in those companies and the state has a, uh, as a grant right now called the next level jobs grant. Mm -hmm. And so companies can use that to train their people up Well, because it's our company. I can, I can train people up. We've already got all the training online Mm -hmm. and I take that money and I help them apply it towards their cybersecurity bill. Okay. So we're actually helping some small company. As a matter of fact, a lot of small companies get their cybersecurity paid for, for a year, maybe two years, depend on, depend on how big they are. Well, wow. thanks for sharing. Uh, what are some other capabilities Lionfish can do for their clients? Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, right now, the cybersecurity space is very, um, they need a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So it's very difficult for all these companies that are helping, cyber, helping companies hire enough people to help those companies. So we're using, and we, we've modified a, um, a path that special forces uses called buy with and through, which where we would go into a country and we would work by, with, and through a partner force. So for an example, we worked with the commandos in Afghanistan. So when we'd go somewhere and kick a door in or, or something, we would use, we would go with them and let them be the face of everything. Mm-hmm. But, but more importantly, training up that particular um, people in that country, they have a more, uh, uh, they want to protect their country more than we want to protect their country, mm-hmm. right? So we use the same philosophy when we go and help a company. So we'll actually train that company, some people up in that company to be our eyes and ears in the gr- on the ground there while we're bringing and implementing all of our uh, security stack and all of our experts. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Awesome. Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It, it certainly aligns with your passion for protecting our country. It certainly aligns with 
your, um, you know, time that you spent in the military and it's coming out with that, that passion gets to be carried through with lionfish. So very, very cool. Well, it, it's scalable, mm-hmm. right? Whereas, you know, it, it's just a scalable system, but, um, you know, if, if we don't do something now, we're all going to be in trouble. Mm-hmm. I mean, China has the IPL, their PLA, their hacker army mm-hmm. is almost a hundred thousand. Just to put that in perspective, Indiana guard has 14,000 mm-hmm. actually wow. less than that. Wow. And, and their cyber unit that just stood up has 100 people in it. That's just Indiana. Mm-hmm. Now, the Army has more than that, yeah. of course, but uh, we don't have anywhere close to China's mm-hmm. 100,000. And that's just China. That's not Russia, mm-hmm. Iran, and all the other uh, enemies of the United States. Yep. And they're all wanting to harm us. Mm-hmm. So, so, you're, so the goal is here is to you know, help out that business, small, medium, whatever it may be, train them up from within and then kind of assist them on the correct actions to take in terms of going about cybersecurity. Yeah. It's all about self aid. Really. Mm-hmm. They're never going to be, they, they probably will never be a, 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 a an expert in cybersecurity, but they'll mm-hmm. have a level of self aid that they can actually identify things. It's more than just why well, don't click the phishing email, yeah. right? <laughs> there's, there's, there's other things that have to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and we come in and try to, we bring in everything we have in our arsenal to help them, you know, with their policies and procedures and, and their disaster recovery plans. And all of this is what we bring. And it's more about being cyber resilient Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than being a hundred percent protected. Cause as you've noticed, everybody seems to be able to be hacked. If you've got enough money resources, you can hack, you can find your way in time. You can find your way in anything, but for the smaller businesses, Mm -hmm. Those are, the, those are the easy targets for people. They mm-hmm. go buy a script kitty off the dark web, press a button, and they find all the ports open, and they come after you, right? Or they do some things because it, it doesn't cost a lot of money to go after that. So mm-hmm. we bring them to a level where that kind of thing that is harder to do. It takes more resources to get to them if they want okay. to. So, Jeremy, is there, is there like a menu of services um, you provide for that small business owner? Or? No. All right. And here's why. Uh, do you know what you need? Personally, absolutely. When it comes to cyber, absolutely not. Right. Nobody knows what they need. Uh-huh. Even though it's it's difficult space to be in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm not an engineer, but I've got some very smart engineers that work with me. But I know that that the a comp a company that gives you, hey, would you like this and this or how about this? You know, and you say, well, I only need this as a company owner. I only need one of these things. That they're like. I could sell it to you, but yeah. what's good to roll in your window up a quarter of the way when your purse and your wallet's right there and they just reach in and grab it anyways. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, you might as well cover what you need to do to be cyber resilient and have at least good cyber hygiene. Yeah, very good point. Makes sense. Never mm-hmm. never thought about it from that point of view. Yeah, absolutely. So, Jeremy, has being a business owner changed your perspective on how you view business in general? Well, I, I'm a little, I'm a little odd. I've been a business owner since 1996 in several, several spaces Mm -hmm. Um, in the real estate space, in the IT space, building databases Um, in, in this space, in the cybersecurity space. um, I own some real estate. So being a small business owner has changed my perspective. It hurts. Yeah. (laughs) It's not easy. I've got, you know, I got relatives that want to be, you know, an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. and they're not cut out for being an entrepreneur. You know, it it takes a certain mindset to be that. And I'm not saying that I'm the best at it, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, some people probably shouldn't be. And I know that people don't want to hear that, Mm -hmm. but it's true. But the ones that that want to be get in there, dig in, jump in with both feet. You're never going to know everything you need to know up front. Mm-hmm. And it, and it's likened to building a parachute on the way down. Okay. Yeah. That makes a yeah. lot of sense. And you know, what's funny is, you know, I, I, I agree with you. It definitely takes a certain mindset. It takes a tough mindset in my opinion to be able to get through the ups and the downs. How do you view mindset? Have you put any thought into that? Well, I, I have actually. Okay. And, um, you know, I was in the military, as you know, you know, and, and you think, well, you're this tough guy that, you know, <laughs> but, but when you get out, you, you stop being this mindset all the time. Right. So I have a business, but I never, I didn't, I started losing that edge that, mm-hmm. you know, just go after it sometimes, you know, you just kind of get this lackadaisical attitude. And, um, it wasn't until I started doing 200 milers when, uh, you had to find something really deep Two, 240 miles was my last one. That's nine marathons. 
Goodness gracious. <laughs> and, uh, How long did it take you? It took me four days, uh, 100 and, 110 hours. Wow. Now I was, I was slow, mm-hmm. but, um, but, but the point is that mindset, right? You have to find that peace in yourself again sometimes. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah, no, it, it makes perfect sense. You know, I always like to say that discipline's no fun and motivation's only temporary. Mm-hmm. Commitment's something, though, that keeps us locked in. How do you view commitment, and how, how do you stay locked in on future vision and goals? It is the... Um, so I've done these other things in the business. Some of those I did because I wanted to make money. And you lose interest after a while. But other things you have a passion for to be something bigger than yourself, to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And in those cases, it's easier to, um, to be led rather than to be pushed because you don't have to be pushed anymore. You feel like you're being led to do something uh, that, that helps a lot of people rather than just yourself. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to make some money, <laughs> but, but I, can, I, I found something that I can make money and help people at the same time. Yeah. And, and that's kind of liberating. Yeah, absolutely. Jeremy, it sounds like you're incredibly fulfilled with being a business owner and operating Lionfish. And I can tell that you're just happy and passionate about Lionfish, but I can't imagine things have always been easy, you know, being a business owner and operating Lionfish. But, you know, I think the feeling of success is a driving force that keeps us moving. I think we find our greatest leaps of growth through some adversity. And so for some of those small business owners that we support here on Small Business Never Sleeps that are finding themselves in some adversity and looking to overcome, can you share an obstacle or a struggle or a failure or a mistake that you found yourself in that you had to overcome, whether that's personally or professionally? Uh, sure. I've had a lot of failures. <laughs> I, I fail constantly. I fail every day. Um, everything that I try to do, if I'm not pushing myself, I, I could do it then. Then what's the point? So, um, <clears throat> you know, businesses don't always work out. Um, you know, I, you, you started off, said I, I, I'm fulfilled. Um, I, I'm beat up, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you get mm-hmm. beat up mm-hmm. every day. Something else is, something new is going to hit you upside the head. You need to be ready for it. So um, I'll share with you, I'll share you a story with you that's not necessarily business related, but it, it, it comes around to business in my mind sure. uh, because of how it works. Yeah, so, please do. And, and I hate to keep going back to these 200 milers, but <laughs> no. there's a lot of lessons that you can learn about yourself, about life, mm-hmm. uh, because you have so many life's moments um, that you got to overcome. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, you, you mentioned Goggins earlier. Mm-hmm. And um, so what, what's funny is uh, Goggins had went and did uh, the Moab 240 the year after I did, and he got hape which he had to pull out of the race for it's high altitude pulmonary edema. I also got hape on, on the Moab 240, but I had two very experienced uh, pacers with me, which was helpful. But, but the run before that I had failed. It was a 200 mile around Tahoe, Tahoe 200. And the year before that one, I failed that one again. Um, I got 190 miles at 205 miles in. Wow. I ran about 70 miles with hape which was incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, And I only share this story because the struggle was Mm -hmm. to figure out how to keep moving, feeling like that. Mm -hmm. And I did, I I was on as much as it hurt. I was on top of the world that I was able to figure out how to maneuver, not being able to breathe, which was incredibly difficult. If you ever, have you ever ran or or moved with a high altitude mask? No, I have not. I, I have not. Yeah. So you've got, it's very labored, right? Mm-hmm. So you got push out hard and you got to suck in really, really hard. So you've got to do these rhythms. Well, going up and down a mountain, there's not real rhythm, <laughs> right? It's all this, you know, and your heart rate goes up. So you had to figure this out. And again, for about 70 miles, I was, was moving like this. And I thought, you know what? I've slayed this dragon, right? This was a pretty big dragon for me. Um, that on top of the feet, having blisters and it did all these other, other things. That was it. Well, at mile about 190, I was going up a mountain. I could only take three steps and I had to stop to breathe. I couldn't breathe. And uh, eventually I had been breathing and laboring so long. Uh, I, and I was almost, I was the last person in, in the race. Mm-hmm. I had to, I had to, I had to quit. And uh, matter of fact, I, I texted my friends and they're like, no, you're just joking. They knew where I was. I had 15 miles left. Why would I quit? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so... Um, but it was a, it was a, it was a hard pill to swallow. 
But um, fast forward that to the Moab, the 240. So it's, you know, a lot further, mm -hmm. another 35 miles. Um, got hape again. But because I had certain people with me, right, I was able to, they were able to slow me down, mm -hmm. keep me going at a steady pace, which is very slow, by the way. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it pays to have friends, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, friends with you during those hard times that you, you don't want to quit. Mm -hmm. you yep. know? And uh, so anyway, that was a, that was a failure that I have not beat. I have signed up for that same race. I'm supposed to be there in September, but I had to, so because I had two hip replacements oh, since boy. then, since that one. Right. And so I've had some issues that aren't resolved yet, mm -hmm. but I am going to go back and I'm going to beat that one. Uh, they've let me push it to next year. So that's, that's awesome. awesome. I think that speaks to your resilience and the resilience that a small business owner needs that they have to continue to fight and move forward. And uh, whenever there's an obstacle or a challenge that they're, that they're faced with that they can't just give up, you know, they, they, might, they need to attack it again. Yeah. So, you're going to fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to fail. It's okay. Fail. Learn from your mistakes, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, go back. Yeah. You're not a sore. failure unless you, you stop. Unless you yeah. quit. Yeah. yeah. Unless you stop trying. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll ask from the other point of view, what's, what's one success story that has kept you moving? Um, and how does that motivate you? So <clears throat> early on in my career, when I went through, uh, the special forces selection, I'll, I'll use that one as an example. Now, a lot of them are physical mm -hmm. things for me. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, but, um, so I went to, uh, the special forces selection course. Now, a lot of people don't know my background before that, why I went in the military. Um, I was, I went in the army band. Okay. What, right. what, what instrument? I played the trumpet. I okay. went to the school of music in Norfolk, Virginia for six months with the Navy and the Marines. I mean, it was a school, you know, as a, as a music school. And, um, because I was more physical, I wrestled, pole vaulted, mm -hmm. you know, I, those were easier things for me than sitting in a practice room. But, um, but I went through the special forces selection course as somebody coming from the band, which is very, very unique. Mm -hmm. If I might say. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, oh, and I made it, by the way. Yeah. That was, that oh, was your you success, did. right? <laughs> yeah. I, I made it to the end. And, and, and to be honest with you, um, I, I didn't know what Special Forces was. I didn't know. Um, all I knew was it looked hard when a guy came was recruiting. Mm -hmm. And I was planning to get out because I wanted to be a music major and play. I wanted to perform. Mm -hmm. But uh, when he showed this film of three weeks, I was like, I can't get out and just say I was in a band. Yeah. It, being into bands, not that bad for my friends that are, but I wanted to say, I wanted to say that I was doing something Absolutely. harder. Yeah. So I went to the selection course thinking that I could go get selected and still get out and say, well, I got selected. Mm -hmm. I just chose not to go. Mm -hmm. But when I went, um, I met the most amazing dudes in my life that were all just, just this, get this stuff done. And I thought, you know what, this is pretty awesome. They offered me a raise, a bonus and, all kinds of other stuff to stay. And I was like, okay, I'm going to stay. That's yeah. awesome. Well, now that, now that like business is not so much physical for you anymore, it's more mental. How do you keep that, that edge and that spark? I, I, I had to find it again. Right. Mm -hmm. So I had some stuff that I was doing. I just let kind of run, but, but now that I've kind of found that edge again, right. You gotta, you gotta keep going at it. You know, yeah. If you hear Goggins, right, mm -hmm. he talks about that, right? Stay hard is what he says. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's right. You know, you lose that edge. I lost the edge a little bit in my life, and uh, I got the, I found it again. That's great. So, Jeremy, what does the phrase small business never sleeps mean to you, and how does it relate? So, <clears throat> it's different when you're a business owner and everything revolves. Uh, it, it, the buck stops at you, right? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't happen, it's your fault. Mm -hmm. If it happens... It's somebody else's fault, right? I mean, that's true, yep, right? Yep. And, and that's fine. I, you give credit where, where it goes, but if they don't do it and you got to pick up the slack and, uh, you know, sometimes you can't get enough people to help you get things mm -hmm. done. So, yep. so there's no time to sleep. But, um, you know, when you keep adding things on your plate, then you really don't have any time to <laughs> yeah, sleep. That makes a lot of sense. Well, there's a lot of small business owners listening, a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs. What's a couple pieces of advice that you could give to them? Make sure it's something you really want to do. Don't just mm -hmm. do it because somebody said, hey, it's a good idea. It might be a good idea, but if you don't have the passion to do it, you're not going to follow through. Have a reason why you want to do it, um, not just for the money. Yeah, great, yeah. great piece yeah. of advice for sure. 
Well, hey, Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us today on Small Business Never Sleeps. We enjoy getting to know you better and gathering a clear understanding of who you are, your story, and how you can help a small business owner thrive. Yeah, absolutely. Really appreciated all the great detail you provided us today, and we'd really like to position you better for our, our listeners and small businesses here in the state of Indiana. You mind sharing with us um, and with them how they can find you? Sure, sure. So we're at www.lionfishcybersecurity.com. Okay. And uh, yeah, you can email us at info at Lionfish Cybersecurity as well. And I think you'll have that on your on your website yep. as well. Yep, absolutely. For our listeners out there, they will also be on our website. They're our sponsorship um, for our July event, and they will be on our sponsor page. You can get all their information from there as well at indianasba.com. So Jeremy, really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us today. You have any last words? No, thanks. Thanks for having me. And uh, thank you for letting me share. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Jeremy. Again, this is a Small Business Never Sleeps podcast. You can find us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and all your other fa- favorite podcast platforms like Spotify, iTunes, Google, and Stitcher. Next time, Nathan and I will spend some time walking through the journey of a small business owner's path towards success. And don't forget to keep on grinding because small business never sleeps. <laughs> <laughs>